What's up, fam? I hope we're live. I'm still trying to figure out how to run this garage studio by myself. It's your boy, Dr. Zubin Demanya. This is the Z Dog MD show, live Saturday, holiday weekend. I don't care. By the way, props to everybody who worked this weekend. You guys are heroes because I used to work every single Thanksgiving and actually I chose to do it because it was slow. It's the day after Thanksgiving that really, really sucks because that's when all the dietary malfeasance comes to roost in the form of CHF, diabetic disasters, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So anyways, welcome. I've got your comments pulling up here in just a minute. Josette is here. Okay. I want to talk about the AMA, not my show against medical advice, which is the superior AMA, but the organization, the American Medical Association. And <laughs> so ever since I was a medical student, these guys have been lobbying for me and mm, hundreds of thousands of other physicians to join their organization, saying that they are advocates for physicians and that they represent us and that without this collective organization and this voice, we would be, you know, run over by insurance companies and government and pharma and everybody else. How'd that work out for us? So we've already been destroyed, and I would argue that the AMA, rather than helping, has actually made this problem distinctively worse. And there are many reasons for this, but primary sort of comes to mind from a tweet they put out today. And let me, I link to it in the description, but let me just summarize here. The tweet was this, can medical schools create physicians who are more effective and efficient working in the EHR? Experts tackle the question. Okay. That they would even tweet something this idiotic is a sign of how out of touch our so-called leadership, our organized medicine has, has become from frontline clinicians. And this tweet triggered generalized outrage on Twitter, including from myself, because this is the premise. Why the hell should we adjust and teach and poison the next generation of physicians into training them to work with a user interface that is about billing and compliance and click, 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 instead of actually looking our patients in the eye, instead of actually spending time at home with our families, instead of charting, instead of destroying the way we think, actually that's the worst sin of our current generation of EHR. It has destroyed our cognition so that the way we actually think about clinical medicine is altered by the way we have to document it. In the old days, you would actually write, you would physically write notes and they would be very concise because you had to write. And that mind physical connection actually changed the way you thought. So when you wrote your note, you actually started to think out, okay, what am I going to do with this patient? And you spent quite a bit of that encounter actually spending time being present with the patient. You would get on the phone or you would go walk to the lounge to talk to other clinicians or the nurses, or the respiratory therapist, or the dietitian, or whoever it is that you needed to get more information from. And electronic silos didn't exist. So humans who evolved, actually, to be together, to interact in real time, not through a screen, not through email, not through staff messages, not through click boxes, would actually exchange ideas, creativity would emerge, clinical reasoning would flourish, and patients would get taken care of. Now, was it perfect? Hell no. Health 1.0 was kind of a mess in that it's fee-for-service, it's patriarchal, paternalistic, there's a million problems, inequitable, unsustainable, sure, fine. So we need technology to help us practice better, to give us the quality improvement, the quality science, and the randomized control trials that allow us to practice better. But what's been sucked away is that human juice, that that analog heart of it that makes it a healing sacred profession. The AMA, which should have been protecting us from this rape of our profession, instead has enabled it, not just with this stupid tweet, which is dumb. They enabled it because the predominant source of their income is the clinical procedural terminology or CPT codes 
the very billing codes that they want us to train the next generation of medical students to optimize their ability to work with through the cash register that they helped create the electronic health record. Let that sink in. AMA makes the predominance of its income through CPT codes and their copyright on CPT codes. They have a massive building in Chicago. They have a big staff. And this is the thing. I know a lot of the doctors who work at AMA, they are good people trying to do good. The organization is rotten. And I'll tell you why. It's risk averse. It does stupid shit like tweet stuff like this about, oh, well, maybe we can teach our medical students to adapt to this piece of shit that they call an EHR that's really a glorified cash register with a little patient stuff tacked on to keep the doctors from openly revolting. And this is our so-called representative, right? These are the people who are supposed to represent us. No, no more. First of all, they don't even have a quarter of physicians as members. It's like a tiny membership. They send all kinds of flyers out at great expense trying to get doctors to sign up or to buy insurance through them or hawk other stuff so that they can play, pay for their bloated crap, right? And do absolutely no good for us. You know, it's actually, our state organizations are much more nimble right? And there are other organizations actually, like for example, the competitor to the American Board of Internal Medicine, which is a crony organization, basically it's designed to use maintenance of certification to basically uh, torture physicians and enrich themselves. So you have, you know, NBPAS and other organizations, you have other organizations that represent physicians. And you know what I would love to see an organization that represents physicians, nurses, housekeepers, environmental, you know, engineers, uh, administrators, everybody, you know, you know what that organization's called? And it actually doesn't charge dues. It's called us. It's called what we do on social media together. It's called going and having your voice heard in a group of people that shares a goal. The goal is make healthcare sustainable for our patients and for caregivers. We all have different ideas of how we might get there, but the goal is the same, which means we share a common approach and a common tribal identity and we have we are beholden to no one right we're not making our money off of the billing the very billing codes that broke the profession let's read some comments thanks for the stars josette um i scribe for my doctor says ria he's always looking the patients in the eye and he's able to focus on the exam there's usually a special relationship between doctors and the scribe has it's better when you have two people who scribe for the doctor. okay so this idea of scribe so look you're making it better in the sense that you're freeing the doctor to do this thing but how about this how about fix the user interface i'm not saying get rid of ehr i'm saying fix it so that it's actually a patient care device instead of the bloated crap. And by the way, yeah, I've been too nice to people like Epic. Um, they are making a ton of money knowing full well that this thing does not actually help patient care, period. So they need to stop doing that. They need to listen to physicians that their user interface is garbage, that it's actually destroying the way we think and it's destroying our relationship with patients and with each other period. Um, let's look over here. I mean, well, look, when we ran our clinic, our partners, Iora, developed their own electronic uh, medical record. And it involved basically a problem-oriented design where everybody could write in the same note at the same time. Because guess what? We didn't use CPT codes. We just did the right thing for the patient because we were capitated. We got a flat fee per patient per month, and we just have to do the right thing. So when you fix that financial incentive, which by the way, when is AMA ever going to fix our financial incentives? They're not because they were weaned and sort of bred on this fee-for-service poison. They're never gonna fix it. Let's be honest, all right? And what are they gonna do too? They're gonna be really, really hierarchical when it comes to other professions. It, instead of teamwork, it's all about silos, protecting this narrow band of interest, which is usually medical specialists. Um, do you think primary care gets a voice really in the AMA? I don't think so. I don't think so. They don't get a voice anywhere except here. Um, 
let's see where we're at. I mean, and this this shit gets me so angry. Let's read some of these tweets, okay? Because I, I, I tweeted back at them, who cares what I said? It doesn't matter. Let's see what actual human beings are saying about this because, and, and their physicians, because you can just judge how effective the AMA is by its constituents online. Take a look at this. So Howard Green says, can EHR companies construct a user interface which improves physician efficiency when loading patient health information for sale by the EHR companies? That's exactly what they do. It's all about taking our data. That's, that's what the EHR companies are really in the business to do too. Um, and Chris uh, Simoniao says, looks like the AMA would prefer medical schools to train coders instead of doctors so they can sell more CPT code paraphernalia. There is an inherent conflict of interest. AMA should divest the CPT business. If they divested CPT, if they actually listened to the voices of frontline clinicians, that would be a whole different thing. You know, can I tell you guys a quick story? So AMA approached us a couple years back about collaborating on some um, some sponsored shows. And I said, oh, this might be interesting. Let's figure out what the deal is. And so I get on the horn with their marketing guys and it was just, it was this quid pro quo. Like, okay, we'll think about working with you. Like, oh, thank you for blessing me, AMA, with your patronage. Fuck off. We'll think about working with you if you share these videos that we've made on your platform. And I looked at the videos and they were all about like, um, they were supposed to be about the experience of women in healthcare, and they were horrible. They were patronizing. They were stupid. I was like, "Are you kidding me? I could make a better video from uh, about this." And I'm not even a woman. Imagine if we actually got women to make the video, right? <laughs> it was just, it was, it was absurd, you guys. It was absurd. It's, it's just a. It's a crony organization, you know? And again, I, I know a lot of docs that work within the org that are really wonderful people that are doing, trying to do the best they can, okay? But here, here okay, here's the, here's the last thing I really wanna rant about about this. What is wrong with doctors? What is wrong with us, you guys? We are the worst. We can't get our shit together. We're constantly fighting with each other. We're so fucking boring all the time, just, such a stick up our ass constantly. And when doctors come up and start speaking truth, oh my God, the shit they take, man. You know, people like my friend Marty McCary and others that I know that are that are really out there like just saying, hey, you know what? Most of what we do is garbage. Maybe we could wake up and do the right thing for each other and for patients, right? And what happens? Just <laughs> if you go to a medical conference, it is it is like getting stabbed in the eyes. It's that aggressively painful. We're so conditioned and hierarchical and risk averse. And it's, it, is it our fault? No, it's the way we select medical students. It's the way we train them. And now AMA wants us to train them to optimize their use of Epic early and often so that when they come out, are they gonna question this fucking shitstorm that we call an electronic health record? No, they're gonna go, okay, boomer, when people like me go, this is garbage. Oh, you're just a Luddite, fuck you. I was programming in fucking assembly language in the 80s while you were shitting in a diaper, okay? We just want a good user interface that focuses on clinical care instead of billing. We want financial incentives where we can do well financially by doing good for our patients and taking care of each other. Is that too much to ask for? from our organizations that are supposedly representing us, come on, you guys. That's all we're saying. Let's read a couple more of these tweets because they just piss me off. Um, I mean, dude, I put a shirt, I put a long sleeve shirt on in my garage on a Saturday to just go off the rails. I should have just worn a t-shirt. Um, let me see here. James Smith. Uh, it would be awesome if you would advocate for physicians, talking about the AMA. I will not join the AMA because it's my perception that the association is not serious about improving and advocating for physicians' work environment. Articles such as these deepen that perception for me. Brilliant. Spot on. Very well said without hyperbole. Another person says, did Epic write this? 
<laughs> oh my God. And the amount of money, you guys, the amount of money. Listen, I've been to HIMSS and these big um, health IT co uh, conferences. And again, the people who run the things, very good people. But it you it's just money is dripping out of the walls. Where's that money coming from? From you, the patient, right? And then, and then they, but then in the same breath, they'll say doctors are overpaid and nurses are overpaid and they need to work harder, be more productive and more efficient, click more boxes. Fuck off. Really? Did you see your booth at Hims? It costs like a million dollars. Where's that money coming from? And I've been on the phone with these marketing people, man. It is like getting stabbed in the eye. Oh my God, we would like to reach frontline clinicians because uh, shut the fuck up. Your product is garbage. All right. There's no way you're coming on my show and you're adding no value to the world. You know, most of the like health IT people out there on Twitter tweeting about stuff are just circle jerking each other. Seriously. Like there's nothing actually getting done. They have whole conferences where people just sit around talking about disruption and innovation and it's the same bullshit. You know what, in the end though, it's not their fault. It's because our incentives are all fucked up. Really, we just have to be paid differently to take care of patients because the current way we're paid does not actually incentivize. Humans are only as good as their incentives. So of course you're gonna have these big booths and all this stuff because there's money sloshing around. There's the incentive to behave like a goddamn jackass that doesn't really care about patients but pretends to. Fuck, I forgot to hit, hit record on this thing so now I can't put it on YouTube. I just realized that. That's what happens when I do this shit myself. Um, all right, guys, I don't know. I, I just had to get this off my chest. I was gonna like take a bunch of comments and stuff. Now I'm just too pissed. Um, I hope you do me a favor. Leave your thoughts and comments in the thread here. Um, it's time we gave ourselves a voice. Why are we relying on these dipshits who have financial conflicts to speak for us? We have a tribe, you know, even just this Z-Pack. It's like 1.4 million people on Facebook, like 200,000 people on YouTube. Let's start making noise. You know, we've been trying. Let's let's ratchet it up. So do me a favor. If you're brave enough, share this video. If you're not, leave a comment and quietly tell people never to join the AMA because it's a garbage organization. And I love you guys. That's it. All right. Thank you to everyone who donated stars to support the show. Thank you to our supporters who are members and we have these private conversations and stuff like that. It really helps to pay for all this garbage that I don't know how to run myself. Uh, and now I got to go walk over there like a jackass and turn it off. Okay, guys? So have a great, safe weekend. Be grateful and thankful for the things we do have. Be loud and vocal about the things we need to change. And I'm out. Peace. Walk over here. Click end screen. <laughs>